Going live. Good morning, everybody. Wake up, wake up, wake up. In wake province up. town. This week featuring. Strong, please. Hey! No! Hey! No! No, really, can I have some coffee? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's Friday morning. It is September 23rd, which means it's the beginning of the winter season. It's the second day of autumn. And boy, did the switch feel like we got flipped yesterday. Yeah. It's 50 something degrees out right now. I'm in a hoodie. Uh, yeah, I got about a quarter of the way here this morning before I realized I was willfully underdressed. It'll be bright for fall. And you stayed in it anyway. Yeah. If I make it halfway down my driveway. Can you check the audio, audio feed, please? <laughs> Just what? What's so funny, Mark? The word Who do we have on the show today, Harry? We've got a lot of fun people. Yesterday I hung out with Pandora. She is a puppeteer here doing the show for the Tennessee Williams Festival. We have a puppetry show at the Tennessee Williams Festival. Yeah, it is. Um, they look really yeah. good. Um, Mark, can you check the connection to the camera for the mics? Our other thing we do today is with our dear friend Kristen Becker of Topless Floors and Top. Mark and I had a chance to take a tour with her last week when it was still really warm and beautiful and summery, quite summery. It was a good summery. Something is not working. We weren't able to fit it into the show right after. Let me check. Last week, so what to be like, Kristen? Let's go to a video of you. So we pushed it. Spoiler alert! There was a moment where you know she stopped to talk about something, and Mark jumped out of the car and ran away. And it was like that scene in Jurassic Park where they're like, "What? Why, why is he? Why is he getting out of the car? Oh no! Here comes a dinosaur!" And then he came back with a handful of cranberries. Yum! Are the cranberries ready? No. Okay. They were like yellow and red. They were multicolor. But like, what is an unripe cranberry? Because usually unripe fruit is like extra tart and bitter, but like, that's just what cranberries taste like. Did you actually put one in your mouth? Yes. And I he was like, it's not ready. This isn't ready. Okay. Yeah, one bite and he knew. Yeah, I usually um, go late October cranberry picking. Mm-hmm. But it is the beginning of, oh wait, we didn't say everyone we got. That's all right, keep We going. also have Sunny Paws coming in to mm -hmm. chat about their pet adoption tomorrow at the Black Dog. Puppies. Yeah. Are you going to get a puppy? No. You have a dog, right? I have enough dog. Dog, singular? Yeah. Between I have enough Brewski dog. and Bravo, that's plenty for me. Does Bravo live with you? Yeah. When Stefan's here, Bravo's here with me. So Stefan takes Bravo to DC whenever yeah. Stefan goes yeah. home. Um, you should get a puppy. I don't know. It would be really good for you. Would it? Yeah. Don't you think it would be I'll good for I'll think about it, I'll think about it. Um, who else do we have on the show? John McDaniel is here. He's a Grammy and Emmy Award winner who's hosting some shows at the Post Office Cabaret this fall. This is what we keep telling everybody. There's more and more to do later and later into the season. He's really bringing is. some really incredible Broadway performers to really town. Really incredible. The first weekend is Hugh Panero, who yeah. you might know from Fan of the Opera, Les Mis, I saw Side him show. in Phantom and you it did? blew my mind. I, Trevor, is that the show that you saw him do? Phantom? Incredible, yeah. right? So Hughes tonight mm -hmm. with John at the post office. So if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, get them now, postofficecafe.net. Also the site of my last show. I haven't been here since I did that show oh, on wow. September 11th. Yeah, honestly, there's, there's things from last week that I feel like you still need to talk about, like your show. I've been gone for a really long time. Yeah. You miss one show and it's like two weeks has happened. Yeah. How was I, your two weeks? I, it, was, it was cute. Yeah. The, um, now that everything's slowing down and the weather's getting a little crisper, crisper, cooler, wetter, mm -hmm. I, I always feel in the summer there's so much pressure, especially when it's really gorgeous out. Like if I have the day off, I'm like, okay, well I gotta go get breakfast, then I gotta go to the beach, then stop by the pool on the way back, shower real quick, go to tea, go to dinner. Like I feel that pressure. And now that the weather's a little cooler and my time off, I'm just like, I'm gonna stay on my couch. Like stay on the couch, get a hoodie. Yeah, get a blanket. End. That's it. Make some food. Smoke a little weed. <laughs> it's it's still ju a lot of pressure, but I can manage. Oh, it is weed picking season. 
It is. We had to call a lot of the marijuana from our crop. It's looking like a gorgeous crop this year. I can't wait to test. I think last year we got about 12 mason jars worth from our backyard. That would last me 100 years. We haven't finished two of them. <laughs> and now we have new weed. I, sm I do smoke weed generally every day. It's kind of my, like, a lot of people will, like, get home from work and be like, ah, oh, I want a glass of wine. Where for me, it's like, I would like to smoke a little weed. You smoke it, you don't eat it? I smoke it. And, but, like, I will buy an eighth and it will last me three months. Like, I smoke every day, but very little. That's crazy. I, like, hit my bowl just a tiny bit, and I'm like, ooh, look at me, I'm stoned. Maybe there will be a giant mason jar of homegrown weed in your stocking this Christmas. Oh if you're a good boy. Oops, never mind. Uh, I'm always a good boy. Big if. <laughs> All, always a good boy. No, so my September 11th show at the Post Office Cabaret was tremendous fun. It was the fourth of four. Um, if you aren't aware, I was doing a monthly... Uh, late night talk show at the Post Office Cabaret upstairs, the second Sunday of every month. September 11th was super fun. Juo was the guest. He was great. He, um, I broke the news that he's going on tour with his show Insomnia. I think it's still a secret, but... Not anymore. Yeah. Uh, follow Juo on Instagram to get updates. I think he's going to be traveling with his show that he did this summer, so if you're not in P-Town or you didn't get to make it to P-Town to see his show, he might be in a city near you this winter. Coming to your neck of the woods, especially if you are in Boston or New York. Or and Florida. Yeah, Boston, New York, Florida. All Ma up Maybe and down. a bit of California. Yeah. Who knows? He's a coastal hit. Yeah. Did you get to go to his last show? I didn't make it to oh, his last show. I, I saw his show twice throughout the summer and I, I just had other things to do this past Sunday, but I heard it was incredible. Mm -hmm. Over the course of the summer, mm -hmm. he had two backup dancers and he kind of rotated through a cast because of like little bits of health issues and other stuff going on, but he had all four of the dancers come to do the show and it looked really cute. There's a really cute picture that he posted of it where he's sitting on his stool singing and all four of the backup dancers are like turned looking at him. It's really cute. Oh. Aww. So definitely check him out if you get to see him this fall. Um, and anybody who came to my show this summer, thank you so much for being there. It was a total stress fest each and every time, <laughs> and I'm really glad we pulled it off. Thanks to Mike Flanagan and the Mike Flanagan trio, Cliff and Christian, who always had my back, literally sitting right behind me playing gorgeous music for everybody. Uh, it was really fun, and I don't know if we're going to get to do it next year, so that might have been it forever. No. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Who know, I don't even know where I'm going to be tomorrow. Do you? At work at the Red Inn. I don't even know where I'm going to be tomorrow. Do you? I know where you're going to be tomorrow. Oh, we're <laughs> almost there. By the way, you have about five weeks left to go to the Red Inn. Mm -hmm. We're open until October 30th, which is a Sunday. We're also, as of now, still doing seven days a week full happy hours from 2 to 4.30. So come in and get your $1.50 oysters, clams, and shrimp. Come and see us. Mm -hmm. So, Me and Bob are there together on Tuesdays and Saturdays, so it's like fun. Which is tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, we will be there tomorrow. Yeah. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you. So last week, and the reason I wasn't here last Friday is I had to go to my niece's wedding in uh, Haymarket, Virginia. It's right outside of Washington, D.C. Can we go farther back first? Well, we where? never. T I'm, I mentioned it briefly, but we never fully talked about Murray winning his Emmy. <gasps> oh my God, you're right. I wasn't here to gloat about how I predicted his Emmy win a full year before he <laughs> won it. And yet you managed to gloat anyway. I'm doing it now. No, that we had a one year anniversary show in July of 2021 when we had Murray on. We had just watched the entirety of White Lotus before a single episode had aired to, to anyone. And I told Murray on this show, I was like, a year from now, you are going to win an Emmy for Best Supporting Actor in the Limited Series for this role. And he was like, uh, and I was like, wait, just wait. And then it happened. Yeah. A year later. Yeah, and then you were in um, the local newspaper. The Cape Cod Times quoted me. Mm -hmm. They were like, local morning show predicted this a year ago. Yeah, and they, they were like, oh, it was before any of it even came out, which made it seem like you were just like throwing something out, but like, you had seen it. Yeah, I had watched yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, if anybody who watched White Lotus, Murray definitely had the best arc. His character mm -hmm. went through it. Yeah. I mean, eating ass, pooping in a suitcase, like falling, Spoiler alert. <laughs> falling victim to his own addiction. Like watching somebody who like has been sober for a while, like fall off the wagon on a TV show and it's your friend doing it. I was like, it was gut wrenching. Totally. Like that was really hard to watch. I'm so happy for you, Murray. We're so proud of you. And we were like, now you have to obviously bring the Emmy back on to wake up. But I was like, let's wait until his next show is about to come out. Chippendales comes out in November. I'm excited. I'm not exactly sure what it's about, but I think there was like, there's kind of like a true crime story mm -hmm. around Chippendales. Do you know if that's what it's about? I, that is definitely a component of yeah. it. 
So I don't, I, I listened to a podcast about it once, but I think it's basically someone created the brand of Chippendales and then someone kind of stole the brand mm-hmm. a little and started touring with it. And basically, it, drama ensued. Murder. Drama, murder, mayhem. Yeah. People in like really great period costumes. Yeah. Like I remember Hot when guys. he was first doing it, we were like, that's what you're wearing in this show. Oh like, God, fine. <laughs> uh, so we're so excited for you, Maureen. Mm-hmm. Um, and, oh, so back to the wedding. Yeah. Listen. So. Um, Arlington, Virginia, Haymarket area. Uh, it, was, it was about 80 people, and I was definitely the only gay in the crowd. More than once, you know, people see this on your hand, and they're like, your wife couldn't make the wedding? And I was like, I don't have one of those. No. Is that the South? Yeah. Well, <laughs> they were all from Florida. Oh, okay. <laughs> My niece's husband's family is all from, like, Kissimmee. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm, I, they didn't sound like that. I don't know why I'm doing like a Georgia <laughs> accent, but it was just very like, where's your wife? And I was like, I don't have one of those. And then somebody else was like, oh, she couldn't make it. I was like, he is at a funeral in Massachusetts. You know, it was very that kind yeah. of wedding. But and then it was fine. It was beautiful. Okay. No, it was no, so but I mean beautiful. your relation to other people. And oh, then... I, I hit it off with Meemaw. Oh, we love that. I know one of the grandmothers. So everybody, all, even the elderly people <laughs> were paired except for one of the grandmothers who was a widow. Her husband passed away six years ago. She and I were the only two people there without a date. So like instantly, besties. it was besties. And she's <laughs> like, if, you, if you're coming down to Florida this winter to visit your friends, stop by Kissimmee Cute. and say hi. No, we like really hit it I off. I love that. If you're watching Meemaw, I love you. And congratulations so, to your niece. Congratulations, Caitlin and Blake. Yeah. I hope you guys have a lifetime of love and happiness together. You know that my nephew is 14, right? No. So I have, a, I have one niece, I have one nephew. My nephew is 14 and he is half black. And we're sitting there at the cocktail hour, like looking around. And he literally says to me, he goes, do you realize that I'm like literally one of the only colored people here? And I said, RJ, we, we don't use that word. We can't say that. And he goes, I'm pretty sure I can. <laughs> and I was like, you're right. <laughs> you, I, I don't know why I said that to you. <laughs> you are obviously allowed to call yourself whatever you want. And I was like, but did you realize that I'm the only gay person here at this wedding? And he goes, yeah, and you know, gay people are the new colored people. <laughs> I'm like, who's teaching him this? Yikes. Where is this coming from? I'm looking at my sister like, <laughs> <laughs> gay is the new colored? Am I allowed to say that? I I'm just I quoting a 14 so. year, listen, <laughs> everybody knows I'm half Thai and half Irish. I am Tyrish. And gay. He is half Tyrish and half black, so he's black Tyrish. And so he's allowed to say whatever the hell he wants. But do people still say colored people? I don't think so. Like, where, uh, why did he say that? I don't it's know. coming back. Is it coming back? Like bell bottoms. Colored's back. Colored's the new black. Are we canceled now? Or we're canceled. <laughs> we're fully canceled. That's, that's, that's the, that's the yeah, are, are, we, are we towing a line here? Yes, we are. But honestly, how it's was like, the rest of your trip? <laughs> no, but I, I literally had to have that moment where I'm like, why am I telling this person what they should be calling themselves? Right. Just because that word bothers me. Like, if you're comfortable using it self-referentially, then go for it. Yeah. You can call yourself whatever you want. Like, I imagine other people wouldn't feel comfortable calling you Tyrish. Um, they can. It's cool. Oh, cute. Yeah, that's mm. fun. Tyrish is fun. Uh, so the wedding was great. Good. And I literally pointed out to him, I was like, there's, there's a black gentleman right there working. There's a Mexican lady right there working. And he's like, yeah, all the other colored people are working. And I was like, honey, get used to that. What? (laughs) So it was great. We had a really good time in Virginia. Uh, What else? Oh, and then, oh, so listen to this. After the wedding, I had to fly to Boston to go to a Pet Shop Boys concert that I had been holding onto these tickets for three years. Like waiting and oh, waiting it was like and a waiting. Pandemic concert. Yes, this was my second pandemic concert. We did Lady Gaga at Fenway Park. Had those tickets for three years. Finally got to see the Pet Shop Boys on Monday, September nineteenth, at an outdoor venue, covered but outside, thunderstorm. Oh, cute! Like pouring rain, and we were in like aisle row seats, on that like right where the rain was falling mm-hmm. right here. It's actually really fun. That was super super fun. And then of course you know this, I surprised Peter with a trip to New York for two days to like, our first wedding anniversary is gonna be October 16th. And I was like, let me surprise him with like an early wedding anniversary gift, early birthday gift, his birthday's October 9th. Um, Does Peter love surprises? Hates them, (laughs) hates them more than anyone I know. Uh And so it's really hard to surprise somebody who doesn't want it to happen at all. Because the minute you go, surprise, I'm doing this fun, exciting thing for you, they go, no, 
what is it? Where are we going? Who are we going to see? What are we doing? I don't want any of that. You better tell me now or I'm turning around. I'm turning this train around right now. Like we're sitting on this train from New London to New York and he's just staring out the window like this, like, <sighs> like getting nervous. And I'm like, what is, what are you afraid is going to happen? I was like, the first thing we're doing is going to dinner with a friend or some friends in the city, like a fun new restaurant that neither one of us has ever been to. It's like, who is it? Who's going to be at dinner? I'm like, somebody that you love. He's like, well, how do you know? What if it's somebody I don't like? And I'm like, why would I do that? Are there a lot of people Peter doesn't like? Yes, but why would I invite <laughs> them to dinner? Like, why would I ever do that? It was a trust exercise. I feel like if we were at one of those trust exercises and he was expected to fall back into my arms, he would just be like, trust me, baby. Just trust me. Dinner was amazing. <laughs> it's a restaurant called Schmone on 8th Street in the village where if you're sitting at the bar, you're literally, you're, no, you're closer to the chefs than they are to each other. Oh, wow. So like they're doing everything right in front of you. There's no bartender or anything. Like hibachi? I guess so, sort of, but even closer. Like I'm like looking at, and you know, it's, this restaurant opened only a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. I'm like so lucky for them that they didn't open two years ago when you definitely could not be sitting that close yeah. to anybody. Like it just made me think, I'm like, New York is back from the pandemic. Mm. Having that dining experience made me feel like, Huh, let's finally, hopefully, try to be able to put all this stuff behind us. Didn't the president say it's not a pandemic anymore? He did. Yeah, Joe Biden in a press conference this past, or not in a press conference, an interview with CBS's 60 Minutes. He said the pandemic is over. We still have a problem with COVID. We're still doing a lot of work on it. It's, but the pandemic is over. New York seems to think so. Well, I mean, a lot of places seem to think so, but a day later, an administration official told CNN that the president's comments do not mark a change in policy. Um, that there was still technically in a public health emergency. The state of emergency is scheduled to end October 13th, but we'll see. Soonish. Yeah. I think it was, it, it was definitely a change in the way the Biden administration is speaking about the pandemic, but they wanted to really reinforce that nothing has changed when it comes to policy around COVID. Okay. Still in a public state of emergency. And also, I mean, we did go to a Broadway show while we were in New York. If you're in the first two rows, you still have to be wearing a mask. Oh, really? If you're that close to the actors, you mm. have to have a mask on. Yeah. Well, Who Leah Michelle did what, like five shows before she got um, COVID and had to leave? Yeah, I think she has it right mm -hmm. now still. Really? Still? Or she took 10 days off. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. over yet. But um, Rumors were flying that she was actually in LA auditioning for something five days after her Broadway debut. Do you think so? No. She was being taught to read. Uh, <laughs> being taught to read, Andrew says. Well, like, She finally got in on the joke, which was good. Oh, she did? So she posts, there was a... Um, there was a TikTok that I shared to a few friends. It was this, it was this guy being like Leia's opening night on, uh, for Funny Girl, and it was like, "Don't tell me not to live," and then, do -do -sh, like just like over -dram dramatizing the whole thing, and then she duetted it and like did it as performed it as well, and um, then later she posted this. There's this TikTok trend of a Kim Kardashian audio of her being like, "Everything's good, but can you talk for a minute?" And it was she, she captioned it, "Me calling Jonathan Groff." for him to read my TikTok comments to me. Good, lean yeah. into the joke. You, that, that would have been the best thing to do two years ago when that rumor started. If you guys keep beating her up like this, I'm we're never gonna get up. her on this show. Leah, I still love you, despite all the bullying you did on the set of Glee. Because of it, really. Jesus. Um, what were we just talking about? Oh, your so, Broadway shows you saw. Oh, yeah. So anyway, you know, Into the Woods is back on Broadway. Mm -hmm. Not for very long. If it you want to like see it, was like a Hollywood Bowl show, right? That then kind of people just loved it so much that it moved on over to Broadway. Yeah. So like, I think Barry and all of our New York friends saw it when it was at like the City Center thing, and now it is on Broadway until maybe January mm -hmm. if you're lucky. Stephanie J. Block, who won a Tony as Cher, is in it as the Baker's wife. Patina Miller, who I saw in Pippin is uh, The Witch. Mm -hmm. um, and our friend, Krista Rodriguez, who we had on this show, is uh, Cinderella. And such Cute. a beautiful Cinderella, too. I don't know the name of the actress who played Little Red Riding Hood, but she was fucking hilarious. That's one of those roles that it can definitely steal the show. Oh, yeah. She and the cow. The cow, I, I cried at this, like, puppet cow. Like, the guy that was operating the cow, it was just so beautiful. I was like, I was shocked I cried. And I'm like, do you know the show? Well, I've only seen that show once. I saw it in college, and I just remember all the funny bits. And then the oh, movie yeah. came out, and I remember being like, oh, this isn't as great as the show. So this is really the first, like, actual production I've seen of it, not counting college. And, like, those last couple of songs, man, I'm, like, laughing for two hours. I cried for the last half hour of the show, and we're leaving, and I'm just like, 
how come no one around, nobody around me was crying? And I was like, you people are heartless. It was so, like, what's the song? Do it, do the melody. Uh, which one? No one is um, alone? Sometimes people leave you halfway oh, through yeah. the wood. Oh. Don't cry. I know, I'm gonna. And I, I as we were leaving. In the late 90s, they were gonna make a movie. They were gonna make, they were, they were working on a movie and they had cast it and everything. And the cast was spectacular. Who was gonna be in um, it? It was like, um, oh my God, why am I blanking? Robin Williams as the baker, uh, Cher be as the witch, Elijah Wood as Jack. It was just like a who's who of like 90s movies. I'm gonna ask John McDaniel who his dream Into the Woods cast would be. Ooh. Think about it now, we're giving you a heads up. Well, I mean, <laughs> Eden Espinosa as the baker's wife. Who's Raul playing? Um, the baker. Really? Okay. Yeah, that'd be Not cute. The, I think he'd be a good wolf. Slash also Prince. that, also that. Right. Um, no, so it was just really, really remarkable. And as we were leaving, I was like, they really made me cry at the end. And Peter goes, no, Stephen Sondheim made you cry. So thank you for all the beautiful music you put out into the world. Um, well, isn't it Mike who just posted that um, Sondheim fans are more rabid than like Elton John fans and yes, stuff? Yes, than any other fans. Yeah. Rabid. We love that though. So we saw that show, then we went to um, a nice dinner, just the two of us, and like there were roses on the table and glasses of champagne, and they were like, we heard it was your anniversary, happy anniversary, and so Peter was like, oh, fuck. Oh, like on, on event four of the surprise, he finally like settled into it a little. And then it was over. And then we went to Lil Nas X at Radio City Music Hall. Damn. Who Peter, ha like ever since Lil Nas X was on SNL, Peter was like, this guy is amazing. Mm -hmm. If we ever get the chance to go, we need to go. So that was the big surprise. That was the big surprise that he ruined for himself. Because he was like, what's going on in New York on Wednesday, September 12th? Oh, he's probably taking me to Lil Nas X. So he ruined the surprise, but loved the show. Good. I mean, the fact that a young, openly gay, black man can sell out Radio City Music Hall two nights in a row with like an all gay cast of multiracial dancers and performers. Like I was just sitting there like, we can talk shit on 2022 all we want, but this would never have happened before today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Good things are happening too. Like we're incrementally, baby steps, we're getting somewhere. The fact that this happened at all, I'm like, mm -hmm. America's not such a shithole country after all. Did you see this past we're week? Did you see this past week? They, they unveiled his um, wax figure at Madame Tussauds. He already has a wax figure? Duh, he's an icon. 22. They used his um, 2021 Met Gala look where he had like this like um, metal armor on. Very cute. I mean, and so sometimes good. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. This one is very good. Like when I first saw the picture, I was like, which one's the wax figure? But because the gold look is obviously iconic, I figured it was that. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, he's so good. If you get a chance to go see him, go see him. Mm -hmm. Can I send you guys to the walking tour? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Since it's a great transition. From Super great This is a great transition. transition. Thank you, Andrew. Um, we have a, a one-minute teaser ad for this upcoming Washington Shore Music Festival. Talk it, about it, multiracial and gay. Yeah, it's a queer music festival happening Indigenous People's Day weekends, the 7th, 8th, and 9th, right here in Provincetown. Buy tickets right now. Book your rooms right now. Get here. Last year was incredible. Um, here's a little teaser trailer for it. All the world couldn't stop me. I am here to stay in my gun. Power. And what does that get you into? All of it. All of it. There are $100 Townie tickets available now at the Crown and Anchor box office. Those are three-day passes for Townie, so stop by and scoop one up if you're gonna be in town. It's gonna be amazing. Um, check, a few weeks ago, I had an interview with Sienna Liggins. Check that out. She was one of my favorite artists that I saw last year. And she's back again, Friday night. Boy Radio is back too, and mm -hmm. he was at the same Lil Nas show that I was at, yeah. if you look at his Instagram story. Yeah, he also um, accompanied Peppermint to the Bros premiere in New York. They looked <gasps> really incredible. Bros together. is already out. Oh my gosh, it's the 23rd next yeah. Friday. It opens nationwide. You guys got to go see Billy Eichner's movie yeah. Bros in the theater opening weekend. Please go and support this. A lot of people are feeling a way about it, but regardless of what way you feel about it, just go see it. You're yeah. going to, like, even if you want to hate on it, go see it. Yeah. Be, be informed of what you're hating on. 
you know? <laughs> yeah, know for a fact that you hate it by paying $20 to see it in the theater. Thirteen fifty. come on. Is that how much movies are now? I, I think movies are $20, aren't they? Okay. Aren't we gonna like run out the entire Wellfleet movie theater to see this? Yeah, I think we should get a big group to go down on Friday. I think so too. Yeah. And if you can't make it to Wellfleet, go and see it in Provincetown. Yeah. It's gonna be playing here opening night, it right? It is, I think. Okay, yeah. good. I mean, they kind of have to. Um, also this past week at the Provincetown Brewing Company, this past Saturday, there was a pet patio party in honor of the Casas fundraiser that they had been doing. It is officially ended and prizes have been divvied and announced. Um, so the winner, of so it was a pet contest people submitted their pets and then you had to make a donation to vote and they have announced the winner it is bartholomew the pig you've probably seen him around town he is an adorable pig the oh my God. can is so amazing i think i have a picture of the can art up now um that is bartholomew it is a hefeweizen and <laughs> it is called the bartholobrew who comes up with these names i don't know Hartley or spalding both all of the above <laughs> um but Congratulations to everyone involved. They raised $17,000 for Casa's Animal Shelter. Oh my shelter. gosh. Yeah. So is that the same weekend as Pet Tea? Did Pet Tea happen? Pet Tea is this Saturday. So you can scoop up a four pack right here at the Province Home Brewing Company or get it on draft here. They're also gonna have it available at Pet Tea tomorrow. So put your pet in a costume and get it on down and have a Bartholomew brew while you're there. I don't know if Bartholomew is gonna be there. I heard he is a little shy around other animals. Um, that he couldn't make it to the part, the patio pet party because he was gonna be anxious. But diva. He, he's, I mean. I love a diva pig. Right. I know many. Miss Piggy. But um, check it out, the beer is delicious. Cute. Yeah. Oh, can you confirm or deny something that I heard about last weekend? So while I was in Virginia at this wedding, I heard that it was like carnival busy between Gay Pilots Weekend and Harbor to the Bay. I didn't feel that. It wasn't carnival busy. It was a great weekend. Um, the, this past Sunday, I made it to tea, which was fun because it was the last daily tea. Mm. They were closed um, for a few days in the week this past week. I think they're just open on weekends now, maybe Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm not entirely sure but definitely Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so be sure to go and support. Mm -hmm. yeah. Until the weekend after Halloween. Like normally they stop on Halloween weekend, but tea is going until November 6th this year. Oh, that's great because um, that weekend, that first weekend of November last year was really busy mm -hmm. um, with the Food and Wine Festival. Um, and now yeah. tea is staying open and I believe Cafe Heaven, a lot of places that traditionally close on Halloween are staying open a weekend or a week later in order to participate in the Food and Wine Festival. That's amazing, I love, that's exactly what we need like kind of shoulder season and even off season events for. It's like to kind of lift the community, remind people there's amazing, there's so many reasons to be here in the off season and also the shoulder season. Yeah, so. I mean, we've said this a bunch already, but get your tickets to the Wine and Food Festival now. Yeah. Wine and Food Festival. Now, me and Bob are that Thursday night are hosting a special edition of trivia right here at the Provincetown Brewing Company. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to write my round on wine. That's fun. Yeah, I'll not? write my round on wine food. Wine not. Wine and winers. Wine and winers. I don't, that would take too long. Right. So many questions. Um, also things going on, well, like we just mentioned, Washington Music Festival, Arts Provincetown. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have Anatala on next week to talk Arts Provincetown and also Fox Fest, which is a new women's event happening this fall. Mm -hmm. Fox yeah. Fest, that's fun. I know, right? Yeah. Do you have any other like major news stories? What's yeah. going on in the world? Um, I guess I only have one more story. Um, we talked about Wicked casting a few, like probably a year ago now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been a slow casting process it seems, but they have finally cast one of the male leads. Obviously they cast Ariana Grande as Galinda and also Cynthia Arrivo as Elphaba, which we were super excited about. But they cast um, Jonathan Bailey as Fiero. You, if you watched Bridgerton on Netflix, did you watch that? Mm -mm. He played um, Lord Anthony Bridgerton, which I imagine is the lead because it's called Bridgerton. Mm -hmm. But he is very handsome. And everyone who watched Bridgerton that I've spoken to about it are like, he's going to be great as Fiero. So yeah. that's really exciting. Yeah. He's going to be dancing through life. Fun. Yeah. That's all I got. That's all you got? Yeah. Let's show them a video. Who's the first video? Um, so yesterday I hung out with Pandora, who's one of the puppeteers that is here for the Tennessee Williams Festival. She's also doing acting in another show, but I stopped by. We hung up backstage at the Crown and Anchor in the midst of the, all of her puppets. So check this out. Good morning, everyone. We are here backstage at the Crown and Anchor with Pandora Gostelum. She is the puppeteer who created all these lovely puppets in um, the show. This is the Peaceable Kingdom or Good Luck God. 
thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited to see this production. It's really, really cool. Um, what about this production really lends itself well to being produced with puppets? There are so many difficult conversations that take place in the world of this play. It concerns questions of aging. It concerns a tremendous amount of cultural conflict. It, uh, the whole thing is staged in a nursing home in 1978 in the midst of a, a riot of nurses. So there is no care available to all of these aged people who need access to food resources and physical care. And there is a situation in which everybody's differences are pushed to the ultimate level. And much of that tension is much more poignant, I think, coming from a puppet and also more acceptable. Right. You see human beings actually fighting one another. You're only worried about that human that's involved in that situation. You're not able to pay attention to the story. Right. In these instances, I think the puppet really can take the brunt of the toxicity that's going on. So you're only worried about that as an issue and not a human body being in jeopardy. Right. And at the same time, you do invest in the puppet and you are so concerned about their welfare that you're inspired beyond the level that you would be had you known that an actor was just playing a part. There are live actors in it as well, correct? Correct. The puppeteers are interacting with the puppets, but we always understand that we're contained within this world. You will not see a human character walk onto the stage, but we operate them from above and our facial expressions and our hand gestures do interact with the language that's going on with the puppets on this scale. How long have you been creating puppets and acting with puppets? Uh, longer than I care to admit, uh, since I was 15. So, you know, about 10 years. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just kidding. I've actually, yeah, I've been baking puppets for the better part of 30 years. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Um, these puppets are so impressive. What what kind of skill and time goes into creating just one of these? Every puppet is unique and uh, it's sort of, uh, I, I liken it to coming to a recipe where you have variations on a theme. Mm -hmm. This is the way that I want this to be shaped today. I make puppets uh, with a company of people and I'm always open to other people's perspectives. Every world that we build has its own unique flavor. These puppets are similar to, but also unique from any puppets that I've ever made before. Their heads are paper mache, and there's a wire armature inside, and then their bodies are made out of wood. And um, I had a lot of fun. I've never made wheelchairs before. I never had to work in this scale, and I had to really dream about what sort of hardware was available to create such a thing without having to hire a welder. Right. Uh, and these are actually the spinners that go on an old fashioned laundry line that you would that, hang yeah. in your backyard. Yeah, and the rest of it's just wood that I turned myself. And these are, uh, they're actually little um, clothes hangers. Like bathroom hooks. Yeah, exactly so. Yeah. So I just had a little dream in the hardware store and um, manage to make things that fit in the scale for these fellows. So the show invents itself. Right. The, you, and as you, you work through it, you figure it out. Correct. Oh, yeah. Really you cool. just meet the needs of the, the script. And I um, am so honored to have been invited by David Kaplan uh, as the coordinator of this festival to do this show because we don't typically as a company work on adaptations of pre-existing scripts. Right. I frequently write the shows or I take on shows that are written by my fellow puppeteers. Right. So treating Tennessee Williams in puppet form is really a fun a fun adventure. And also like working puppets into a production rather than working a production around puppets must have been a kind of a challenge or just was it fun? The puppets drive the story and I always work in that way. It has been really interesting to see the way that a script designed for human actors interacting can be modified for puppets. That was a really fun challenge. Oh, yeah.
Um, well, I'm super excited to see the show over the weekend. It premiered last night. We've got two shows today, another on Saturday and another on Sunday right here at the Crown and Anchor. Um, I can't wait. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me. That was so much fun. They have two shows today, one tomorrow and one on Sunday. Be sure to check it out at The Crown and Anchor. And check out on the Tennessee Williams website to see everything they've got going on this weekend. Welcome, ladies. Darlene and Tony from Sunny Paws Rescue. And also Nauset Canine Club. Thank you for coming today. Thanks for, Thanks for having us. Yeah. We're really excited you're doing a, tomorrow, you're doing a, an adoption event at the Black Dog right here in Provincetown. Yes. Yeah, how many dogs you got? So, right now we have 54 <laughs> in wow. our rescue, but we're bringing three tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, three very special dogs with very special stories. Yeah, cool. like what? So, um, our first little dog named Peanut, um, it was heartbreaking when I I got the phone call to ask if we could take him. So we pull most of our dogs from Texas. And this little peanut, this little tiny dog, was thrown out into the street with no fur, excoriated, bleeding. I didn't think he was going to make it. So we um, nursed him back to health. And he came um, to us from Texas. And he is looking for a forever home. And he's a total love bug. Love Just that. wants to sit next to you on your lap kiss you, be right next to you, doesn't ask for much, Cute. and gives back so much. You were saying a second ago that you have eight dogs at home. I do. What that kind? Crazy What's dog. the range? <laughs> yeah. Crazy dog lady. Yes. yes, I am that definition of crazy <laughs> dog lady. So my smallest um, is a six pound chihuahua mm -hmm. that I literally um, saved myself. Someone left her in a hot car, it was 90 degrees out, and the window was cracked that much, so I, I, I'm going to confess I did break the law, but that's all I'm going to tell you. I'm <laughs> not going to tell you when and where, um, <laughs> but when I, we, she was smaller than a Coke can, like she literally fit in my hands, oh my and I rushed her to the vet, and the vet said to me, not even 30 seconds later, we would have had a different outcome, so I, I don't regret it. Wow, well, yeah. And my largest dog is a mix of um, Doberman, Rottweiler, Boxer and Shepherd, so they go right up from six pounds to very big, mm -hmm. and they all sleep in the bed with me. And they all, <laughs> no way. And they all get along. No, they do not. So that's, that's quite a challenge. So we do a lot of rotation, and um, yeah. But you know what? I know it makes me crazy. Um, I'm a nurse by day. I take care of um, patients at the end of life. I do hospice during the day, and when work is over, my passion, some say I'm obsessed, which is fine, is saving these dogs. Mm. Why is it that whenever I hear of rescues, especially in New England, Massachusetts, it's always do like, it's dog rescues from Texas, Florida, the South, why is that? I think there's a lot of kill shelters in those areas okay. too, so it's more urgent when we pull the dogs. Mm -hmm. But also, it's a, a little bit of a different lifestyle. Like the dogs are living outside, mm -hmm. they're not fixed, they're having puppies over and over again. Mm. Um, we're here, like I know for um, the kennel when I opened it, I tried to get dog houses just for in the yard for the dogs, and I couldn't even get any up here because we don't have our dogs living in the backyard right. in a dog house. We're down south, that's all they're living in. Mm -hmm. So it's just a, it's a little bit of a culture change too when you come up here. Um, but like, it's funny because when we do rescue events, we have the throwaway dogs is what they call their dogs down south because they were three days away from being euthanized. Then they come up here and we do an adoption event mm -hmm. and we have people lined up for two and a half hours to pay 10 times what the dog was in the shelter down south. And the people, our fosters down south are like, what? Like you guys are crazy up there, <laughs> you know? Right. But, but, and we are a little bit crazy, right. but, but in a good way. I, I mean, no, crazy is did you find over the pandemic years, like it seemed like everybody was adopting a dog. Yeah, now everyone's bringing their dog back. You bring back. up a very valid point, that is heartbreaking. So yeah. just to give you an example, during the pandemic, we got 40 to 50 applications in a week. Mm. Now I'm lucky if we get five. Mm -hmm. Are you getting dogs returned as well, you said? Interesting. What, so what do you think are the best questions to ask yourself? If, you're, if I'm thinking about getting a dog, what are the questions I should ask myself to kind of mitigate that from happening and that's a really good question so I think you have to look at your lifestyle mm -hmm. yeah so if you're, if you're if you're an active and breed and yeah. an, um, 
you're an active person and you like to run or walk or hike or go to the beach, you need to get a dog that's an active dog. Right. But if you're a homebody and you like, you know, you go to work and you like to watch movies and you hang out on the couch, there's a breed for that too. Right, right. but it's not it's, like a husky. People right. will think right. like a husky is so beautiful and oh, I want to have one. And then, you know, the husky needs to walk like eight miles a day. And yeah. if you're not going to do that, right. then yeah. maybe you shouldn't get a husky, you right. know? So My it's, roommate got an Australian cattle dog. And working dog. Yeah, but yeah. he he has that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. He takes yeah. him for an hour and a half walk yeah. twice a day. Yeah. He takes him to the beach, and runs that's him the around. Responsible mm -hmm. thing to right. do, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, so you do have to do a little bit of homework before you go I in. I think so. And the yes. good thing I think about rescues, you are able to talk to that foster that's had that dog for like a month or two months, so they know everything mm -hmm. there is to know about that dog. Whereas you get a dog from a breeder or something, you show up, you pick up a puppy that you think is cute. You don't know anything about the dog, but yeah. the foster, because it's, this is a foster-based rescue, you know that that foster has been with the dog and know the dog's probably already potty trained, already the hard, hard work stuff. The hard work <laughs> has totally been done for you, you know. So it's nice if you want. Like I knew I needed, I wanted a dog that would be good in the car. I'm on the road all day long, and I asked the foster, and oh, this one's great in the car, That's loves right. the car, you know. Like so, it's great that you're able to kind of like know what you're getting mm -hmm. before you just pick a cute puppy. And right. then another option too is that if you can't make a lifetime commitment to a dog. Think about fostering. Yeah. Mm. We always need fosters, and by fostering, you're saving a life. Oh, yeah. And I'm not emotionally stable enough to foster. <laughs> I would like keep them all. So, uh, <laughs> That's how hard. you end up with eight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it, it is hard. No, you yeah. have a really good point. It's really hard to say goodbye when they mm. leave, yeah. but your heart breaks a little, so theirs doesn't have to. Right. Yeah. And if people, everyone had that attitude, then more dogs would be put to sleep yeah. because we don't have enough homes. Yeah. I've been doing this a very long time. I still cry. Yeah. <laughs> I do. No, I know. <laughs> but I'm not going to stop doing Please. it because yeah. every single dog we oh, save God. is huge. It's huge. Yeah, I know. Yeah, my sister kind of habit of rescuing an elderly dog giving it a few really great last Those years or two. Those people are angels. Yes. That's what Karen Nash does too. Oh, I love that. Only yeah. old dogs. Yeah. 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 So, so where is Sunny Paws? Okay, so another great question. <laughs> um, so because we're foster based, we're actually, I have fosters all over Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. My my dream, my goal, my, um, my relentless asking and begging for money <laughs> is to eventually buy a house that is not going to be a shelter or we're not going to do boarding or anything like that. We'll go here with my friend <laughs> for that. But this is to have a house where our fosters can come and make that transition over. Mm -hmm. So when they, you know, give them the best setup for success before they go on. So I live in Falmouth and I run sort of the operations out of Falmouth, mm -hmm. but the dogs are all over the Cape and oh, all over awesome. Massachusetts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how is the adoption event going to work tomorrow? So we have been invited and we're so grateful for the invitation at the Black Dog. Please come out and see us. Um, we'll have some puppies for you to see and hold and love on. We'll have applications. Um, we check all of re everyone's references and the vet references. And if there's a puppy that you see that you bond with tomorrow, that's great. If not, you can get an application on file. And when you tell me, hey, this is kind of what I'm looking for, I will know, so when that puppy comes, I can call and say, oh, awesome. you know, we spoke, you asked for this, look what I have, would you like to meet him, kind of thing. Oh, that's great. We're very, very flexible because we want it to be the right fit, not only for the owner, but for the dog mm -hmm. too, because we don't want anyone to have mm. to bring a dog back. That's traumatic yeah. for everybody. Yeah. So we work really hard to make a match. Awesome. Um, and then you adopt your dog, and then you give your dog to me. <laughs> not, not the canine club. Because when you we, have to go to work or go on vacation. Yeah, we have, uh, we're on almost three acres there, and we have a facility like no other facility. And it's, it's geared up because I've been involved in rescue for a while. It's, it's got a different spin on, I think, than your normal kennel or Actually, doggy yes. daycare. It's, there's yeah. so many different spaces for them to go, divided up by behavior, you know, um, or you can board and we take them out five times a day in boarding, the biggest kennels you've ever seen, probably nicer than hotel rooms that some people have. It's 68 degrees, they're on elevated beds. Adopt, Adopt me. Adopt <laughs> right? Take right? me there. East yeah. Ham, you said, right? It's in East Ham, yeah. Awesome. yeah. That's really great, because there used to be a, um, a boarding place in Provincetown, and it's yeah. no longer there, so no long that's a We great have option. a lot of people from Provincetown, oh, that's awesome. a lot of people. Oh. And actually, the former owner, um, of the facility yeah. used to have a shuttle that would come here and pick up dogs. And it was like a bus that had school, like bus stops to pick up dogs 
and bring them back to our account. Oh, that's so, so I cute. think that we need to do that. <laughs> and we need a bus driver. Okay. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> what that was a very quick, tomorrow? okay. Um, <laughs> it's 12 to 4. 12 to 4 at the Black Dog tomorrow. Yeah. Go say hi to these ladies. Check yeah. out these adorable puppies. Get a dog someone. if it's right for you. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Thank you so much for your time. Thank yeah. you for yeah. having us. We appreciate us. it so much. Of course. Have fun tomorrow. Thank Looking you. Looking forward to it. You will. Let's hang out with Kristen now. Yeah, check this out. Dolly. Dolly. How are you? Oh, yeah. She's a nice blonde. Yeah. <laughs> where all of the hippies would gather to nude sunbathe okay. because it wasn't on federal land Let's see what this guy's and the town didn't um, have an issue with it. Wow. So if you were to fly over during the heyday of when the hippies were all hanging out here, there would be a line of hippies naked in, you know, sunbathing that were not in the technically in the federal park. Like hot hippies or dirty hippies? Um, dirty hippies, but they did have, you know, is there a difference? Water. Yeah. Some hippies are hot and some are just disgusting. Yeah. That's true. Some you look like you have to but crack some, But them if you bathe like some of the gross ones, <laughs> have you ever tried to bathe the gross one? It's really um, cool. I have Jeff Kristen Becker. Yes, sir. Topless Dune Tours. Topless Tours. Topless Tours. Topless Tours, be ten. How is your tour different from the other Dune Tours? Uh, you know what? Um, oh, oof. Uh, topless? <laughs> uh, uh, so we're doing, we're doing like a private concert. Right? So there's just, you know, listen, it's beautiful out here. I used to work for arts. We all love arts. Uh, we pick you up wherever you are in town. Mm -hmm. um, I have some cold beverages in the back. Would you like a cold oh beverage? Oh, my God. Yeah. I have a water, a sparkling, non, no alcohol. Uh, but I do have some non-alcoholic beverages. We're going to drop you off. And I think the key component is uh, we only do one party per Jeep. So when you say, hey, we want to go to the dunes, you rent the whole Jeep. The Jeep shows up. We don't leave. Uh, we don't put other people in it. We just come get you and your party. And so I think that's the, the main difference. We're all going to the same beautiful place. We're all telling pretty similar stories about what happened here because part of this is being informative and the park really likes it when we share information and then we try to do it in a charming manner. Um, and we're women owned. I think those are the, the two major, three, four major differences. You are very charming. Why, thank you. <laughs> I put on my full lesbian in the dunes outfit for you. A big fish in hand. You know? It really couldn't be a better day for this. No, it's really beautiful. This is a good talk. No, there's a ton of cranberries. You Holy wanna, you wanna get out, Mark? Wait, yeah. I think you really should. <laughs> Go get some cranberries. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, and that's the right other there. thing, if um what the difference is. So we are your car. So we'll stop wherever you want to stop. If somebody gets excited about cranberries, then so be it. <laughs> we're gonna get out and we're gonna let Mark look at cranberries. He can try them, he can tell us if they're good. I don't think they're totally right yet. Uh, He's not sure. Um no, they're they're not. Let's get back in the car. It's but, a little early. <laughs> yeah, it's early for the cranberries. But look, there's going to be a really good cranberry harvest. Oh, wow. Ooh. And when we come out for our cranberry hikes. Full disclosure, the, uh, it was this bog exactly when that I was driving by and I went, oh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> so you're like, turkeys and oh, okay. <laughs> I get it now. What's weird is animals don't eat these. They don't? No, no but we did. We did. I know. Here. Uh, so basically, there's two things in the graffiti etiquette in here. Uh, one of them is that you would incorporate this. You know, it's called Shark Henge on the map, right? If you Google map it, this is called Shark Henge. So they incorporated the shark by using the mouth, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then also the teals that they use would be to tie in the room. So basically, in graffiti culture, you would make it. And even this like little chicken scratchy thing would be to tie in this, sorry, the, t the style of that piece over there, which is. Do you know how long this has been here? This has not been here that long. Really? I love it. <laughs> 
Definitely, if you get a chance, go take a topless tour with Kristen Becker out in the dunes. It's so beautiful out there. And maybe by now the cranberries are ready to eat. Yum. Delish. <laughs> Please welcome to the show our friend John McDaniel. John, how hey, are you? Hey, Bob. I'm good. I'm good. So happy to be here with you. And for three weeks, we were just saying, I've, I've been to Provincetown before. I've popped in, done a show, and popped out. But I get to be here for three weeks now. It's really thrilling. Love that. Yeah, it's good. Opening night was last night. Last yeah. night, and How'd you know, audiences here are so great. Oh, they yeah. like, and Hugh is so wonderful. He's so funny, and his voice is amazing. Mm -hmm. So the audience was like, "What is happening?" Yeah. It was really great. I've seen a lot of Broadway shows, and he's, I think, one of the only people that I saw on a show, and I was like, "Who is this person?" Look, watched a thousand YouTube videos. He really, I saw him in Phantom of the Opera, and he. Yeah not my favorite show and he really made it i was like that was so worth it to see him yeah he's yeah. incredible yeah really incredible yeah, yeah so he's heaven. this weekend yes tonight and tomorrow with you and then next week i'm here with eden espinosa who is i know <laughs> harrison loves <laughs> eden she's my favorite alphabet i know a lot of people she's one of the best ever you obviously it's tough competition with adina menzel shoshana bean like all those incredible yeah, a lot names of, but mm -hmm. she just has like this beautiful crisp quality to her voice that i could listen to forever she was uh, adina menzel's original standby yeah. and she went on like in way early on and i went to see her and mm -hmm. uh, it was great but i had put her in brooklyn you know the brooklyn the musical also which, one of my favorite shows yay. not enough people know it but but brooklyn wasn't quite ready to come to broadway so she did wicked first and then brooklyn came it was a great, great experience. I love that. And then week three is Leroy Reams, right. who is like 80 years old, mm -hmm. and he acts, he's like had more energy than any of us put together. Mm -hmm. He was and in the original cast of 42nd Street. 42nd Street, and it's so many shows, mm -hmm. amazing. So, uh, and he has great stories about Jerry Herman, who he knew really well, and uh, it's gonna be really an amazing week three. How did you get talked into this? Three weeks in Promise Town. All right, so I was here with Melissa Manchester last last September and I met Jack Kelly and we hit it off and he was like, what can we do, what can we do? How can we get you back to P-Town? So we, we decided to put together a Broadway series and I called my friends and said, hey, you wanna come? And everybody said yes. So, it's, it's so much fun. It's a thrill, yeah, it's super fun. You've got some big name friends. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, do you, I was going to ask you, do you miss the grind of like a daily team? He's got a couple Emmys from the Rosie O'Donnell show, of True, course. True, yes. <laughs> like, do you miss yes. that sort of job? So it was an amazing time. It was an amazing time. We were live, you know, live TV every day from Rockefeller Center. And I got to work with all of my idols, you know, Barry Manilow and Billy Joel. And it was just, and, and Tony Bennett. And it was amazing. It was great. But it was... It was a lot, but we were on six and a half years, which was perfect. And she always knew she wanted to do seven years, and it was six or seven. So it was, it was uh, not unexpected to finish, but gosh, it was great while it lasted. It was mm -hmm. wonderful. And I also got to continue to work on Broadway all through that time too, with Annie Get Your Gun, with Bernadette Peters, and Reba McIntyre, and um, it was it was a, a wonderful time. Yeah. Life is crazy if you live long enough, you get to do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Totally. And a Grammy for Annie Get Your Gun. Exactly right. On top of it all. Very good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was an amazing score. I had done the show in high school, and so to get a chance to rethink it for Broadway years later with Bernadette Peters, it was like, it's that wild. was a dreamy thing. Yeah. It was really great. I was thinking about her a lot the other day when I was at Into the Woods. I love Patina mm -hmm. Miller, of course, but I'm just like, I was only eight when Bernadette Peters did it on Broadway, and I was yeah. like, oh, I wish I could have seen that. Yeah, it was incredible. It's a beautiful show. Yeah. Vanessa Williams is my forever witch. I oh, really? I yeah. love her yeah. so much. <laughs> There's so many. There's so many. And they're all amazing, and they all yeah. put their own amazing spin on it. So. It's a great role. It's a great yeah. show, as you know, you were talking yeah. about before. And so how are you finding Provincetown in September? It's, well, I didn't pack correctly. I <laughs> packed a lot of shorts and t-shirts and little skimpy little outfits. Not really skimpy, but you know. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but I, I need some sweaters, so I'm gonna oh, be yeah. shopping. Cute. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but it's, it's beautiful, it's yeah. beautiful. Oh, yeah. yeah, we love it. So how does the format of these shows go? Is it kind of like conversational between the two of you? And Not really, I come out, I do an opening number about mm -hmm. welcome to the, the swanky cabaret in P-Town. And I sing about the artist who's joining me, and then I bring them out and they, they do a thing. And sometimes we sing together, and uh, it's, it's an hour show and it's, it's super fun. 
Are you going to do Street right. Singer with with Eden? We'll see. Uh, we're talking about all kinds of stuff. We haven't really, <laughs> you know, we, we, we're sort of living in like the let's do things we really want to do. So I love that. Yeah. And with you, can you do I Will Never Leave You? <laughs> <laughs> Joined at the hip. <laughs> yeah. What a great, I love that show. Me too. Oh, I saw that original production three times. Really? Mm -hmm. Opening night in the middle and closing night. Wow. Amazing. That's perfect. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so good. So you've known him for a long time. I've known Hugh a long time, but we've only started working together. We did a, a Playbill cruise on the Nile in January. Oh my gosh, wow. And we became you know, great friends on that and you know, went to the pyramids together and went up in a hot air balloon at dawn over the Valley of the Kings. It was a sick experience. And so we've been doing some shows this year a little bit together and um, mm. he's, he's so great. He's, he's so funny. I think people don't realize how funny he is. Mm -hmm. And we just have a marvelous time. So what time is the show tonight? Tonight at 6 o'clock. Tomorrow at 6. Yeah, all the shows are 6 o'clock. I love 6 o'clock. I know. <laughs> it's a great time. It's and perfect. You get to go to dinner and yeah. Yeah, enjoy a cocktail during the show. And be in bed at 9. Uh, oh, the dream. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Right. Oh, my God. Well, thank you yeah. so much for being here. What a pleasure here. to meet you. You guys are great. Oh, it's so fun you, to be on too. your show. Thank you very yeah. much. So tonight at 6 o'clock at the Post Office Cabaret with Hugh Panero, John McDaniel, and for the next three weeks, too. Yep. I I'm, are there Sunday shows? No, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I can go on a Thursday. Okay, yeah, great. I'm going to have to see Eden next yes, week. You have to. You have to. Have to. <laughs> it's going to be yeah. awesome. Thank awesome. you so much. Break a leg. Pleasure. Yeah. Thank have you. fun. Thank um, you. Thank you, everyone, for watching this lovely crisp fall morning. Thank you to all our sponsors. We've got the Red Inn, Be Well Cannabis, Cafe Heaven, The Crown and Anchor, Provincetown Brewing Company, Project Valor Sailing, The Adam Howard Metal Workshop. That's it. That's all Thank you all for yeah. waking up in Provincetown. Wherever you are. And we'll see you next Friday. See you next Friday. Bye. Good, Good morning, morning, everybody. everybody.